Oh, the horror and oh, the shame. Today, we're going to talk about the atrocity known as Bevelin and Boss. As you may know, in the Photoshop Fails Ads tutorial series, we're going to take a look at some of the horrible things you see coming out of Photoshop and how I think you should use those features and maybe ways you can find that you can use those features. Now, we've all seen this bevel and emboss feature before on text, on graphics, on all kinds of things. It is positively abysmal. We don't want this in our graphic design. This kind of bevel and emboss effect is the hallmark signature mark of an amateur designer. You don't want this kind of bevel and emboss. In fact, it's better to go with a flat graphic. However, bevel and emboss is not all bad. This big pillowy, deep shadowed, weird, artificial, high lit bevel and emboss is really bad. I'm going to show you a couple techniques to do good bevel and emboss. Here's how we do it. I'm going to shut that off. I'm going to turn on this type layer that I have here, noting that this is in fact the Golden Gate Bridge. And we're going to begin with the words Golden and Gate. And I'm going to go layer, layer style right here. And I'm going to choose Bevel and Emboss. Actually, in order to do this, it's going to be difficult to see it on black text. So let's leave Bevel and Emboss checked on. Let's throw a pattern overlay in place. So I'm going to tick on pattern overlay and select that. And from pattern, I have this little stone pattern here, which I just imported. I'm going to choose that stone pattern. Now we can really see our Bevel and Emboss, right? All right, we're going to go back to the Bevel and Emboss. And see, if I increase the size, it's just going to give me this big pillowy looking circular uh, letter, uh, circular effect, uh, whatever. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just ugly. Um, having the stone texture definitely helps a little bit, but here's what I think should be done. Because this is a stone texture, it might be interesting if we make the text look like it is sort of hard cut. So we're going to change the technique from smooth to chisel hard. At this point, we drag the size up until basically we just have sharp points on all of our letters. So I'm at 65 pixels. This size is going to be different just depending on the size type you have. So I'm going to go with 65 here. I'm going to leave the angle and altitude the same. This is just going to change the direction kind of of the light. Um, you can see if I move it there, it completely knocks the effect out. I'm going to undo that. Actually, I'm not going to undo it. I'm going to move it back to somewhere uh, like that. 45 and 32 is fine. I'm going to leave the contour as it is. Now, here, this is very important when using bevel and emboss. A realistic or maybe I should say a decent bevel and emboss, I think, is entirely predicated on how you use the highlight and shadow opacity sliders. Too much highlight looks bad. Too much shadow definitely looks bad. With something like stone, you don't typically see strong highlights on it unless it's very, very polished. So I'm going to go pretty subtle on the opacity for the highlights. And in fact, I'm going to weaken the opacity of the shadow as well. Now it looks much more natural. We can go ahead and hit OK. We're going to do the same thing here for the word bridge. But actually, we can just right click on our layer and choose copy layer style. Right click on the bridge layer and choose paste layer style. And there we go. Now, notice this. Our text does not come to that point that our text up here comes to down here because these letters are bigger. So we want to double click on bevel and emboss here. It's going to bring up bevel and emboss. And sure enough, all we need to do is increase the size of the bevel and emboss, right? Let's take it up to like 100. And there we have that pinch together, everything coming to a point look. Hit OK. And there we go. We've created this kind of cut stone text effect. So that's one of the things you can do with bevel and emboss that I think is worthwhile. One of the other things that is of a little value that you can do with bevel and emboss is a bit of a letterpress effect. So I have got this text here that says letterpress, which I'm going to try to make look like is pressed down into this dark, dark, bluish, purplish material underneath it. So we're going to begin by going layer, layer style, and choosing bevel. Actually, we're going to start with blending options. Here in blending options, we're going to reduce the fill opacity to zero. Fill opacity, as you can see, whoop, fill opacity makes our artwork on that layer disappear. However, it does not make layer styles disappear. The layer styles behave just as if the pixels are still there. So like, let's say we go color overlay. You see that? It's going to fill with a color. Uh, we can go like outer glow, right? The text isn't there, but the glow is there. So you can make this huge outer glow. That's cool. All right, so if we go bevel and emboss, turn that on. You can see it's going to emboss like the type is there and visible, but it's actually not. We're going to set the technique from chisel hard to smooth. I just think it makes a slightly better highlight. And I also, I've changed the direction here. Normally it's up. I'm setting it to down. Uh, this, a size of three is good. Maybe two would be even better. Whoop. Let's try that again. Two. There we go. Cool. Uh, you can change your angle or altitude by swinging these uh, little inputs or swinging the little dot anywhere you like. So basically, it's just going to you know, change which edges get the light or uh, highlight or shadow. In this case, we have the shadow turned all the way down. The reason I like to do this is because while you can place a little shadow underneath what would be the upper lip with bevel and emboss, I find that it works a lot better if you use inner shadow for the shadow part of this. Bevel and emboss works great for just the nice little highlight on the bottom. 
Um, so once you have that set, and you can see you can adjust the opacity here, I'm actually going to drop mine between 45 and 50. We can then go uh, inner shadow, not inner glow. Now here in inner shadow, uh, we uh, my, my settings are super crazy. I'm going to keep the blend mode at normal. I'm going to set the color to black. Um, now the opacity is at four. I'm going to make it 100. You can see it's making my letters crazy. Yours probably doesn't look like this because my size is at 250 pixels and also my noise is at 100%. I'm going to get rid of all the noise and I'm going to boost the size. Now I have my angle at 90 degrees. So that means the shadow is coming straight down from the top as if there's a light source directly above it. I'm going to change the angle to about what the angle of my bevel and emboss is. Maybe like 75, eh, probably 85. You have the freedom to choose a different angle with inner shadow because it's not hooked to that one global angle uh, and that, that has nothing to do here with global light. That's something different. Don't be confused. Um, but this one light source determines both your highlights and shadows in bevel and emboss, whereas this shadow, the inner shadow, frees me from that. So I'm going to set the size to, I don't know, probably like four or five, whoops, five, let's go five. And we can set the distance as well to bump the shadow out a little bit. Um, I actually don't like that at all. I just like a nice subtle shadow. We can even reduce the opacity a little bit. Just make sure you can still tell what the letters are and hit okay. And there you have a letter press effect uh, using bevel and emboss. One of the other things that we can do is do sort of this realistic highlight um, or slash gel text. So let's just clear this layer style. I right clicked on the layer and I'm going to choose clear layer style. And we're going to basically do the same thing. Go layer, layer style, blending options, get rid of the fill opacity. We don't need that. That's in the way. And tick on bevel and emboss. Now we're going to set the direction to up because we want our highlight up at the top. And we're going to increase the size a bit. Something like so. Uh, maybe more like 10 pixels. That's good. We can reduce the opacity of that just a touch. Um, and then here we can even boost the shadow on the bottom. Now I don't like the way that looks uh, kind of at all. In fact, I'm going to leave the shadow mode all the way down low. And let's reduce the size as well. We're just going to give a really realistic looking highlight across the top of our text. And let's see what happens if we drop a very subtle drop shadow directly beneath this. So I've got angle set to 90 degrees. Distance of 4 is fine. Maybe we'll make the size a little bit bigger. Let's try 10 for the size. Um, and I'm going to drop the opacity uh, quite a bit. Something like 25, 20, 28 percent is what I got. That looks pretty good. Your blend mode can be multiply, it can be normal. Normal's a little safer, uh, but you don't get any interaction with the background. That's fine though. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I want to boost the opacity a touch more. Let's go to like 70 percent there with the normal blend mode. Hit OK. And you can see we have this very subtle highlight effect where we've almost created this plastic looking text. Again, just using bevel and emboss. If I shut the effects off, we go back to, well, nothing because our fill opacity is at 0 percent. Uh, we want to keep it at 0 percent. And we get that nice little effect with bevel and emboss. So I think the key with bevel and emboss is to use it wisely, which can mean use it sparingly. It's really not the greatest looking effect overall anyway. Um, but there are a few effective ways you can use bevel and emboss. So while it's an awful, awful effect in general, there are a few good things you can do with it. And maybe there are more that I've missed. Leave a comment below on this video if you feel like there's some great way that you use bevel and emboss that I missed. And make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more free video tutorials. Thanks for watching. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up. And going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.